So, I've wanted to make a dress form for a long time, just to improve my sewing skills. If you don't know me, I mostly do vintage sewing and I've been really into making my own patterns lately, of mostly things from like the 30s through the 50s, and I've been sewing for about 4 years, and I've made videos about it since I started. The reason why I waited so long to get a dress form is because most commercial dress forms are really expensive, and I'm usually slightly smaller than the smallest size that they provide, and so buying a dress form really wasn't going to work for me. A lot of people make their own dress form, they either sew it, like what I'm going to be doing in this video, or they make a cast of their body and they do like expanding foam and all this stuff that's really complicated, but even sewing a dress form, making a body double of myself seemed really daunting for a long time and I wasn't sure if I put in so much time and effort if it would even come out well, but after having project upon project of just like the back of the garment just not fitting right at all, I decided I, I have to bite the bullet and make the dress form. I watched a bunch of videos on it, and most people use this website called Bootstrap Fashion, and they make custom dress form patterns based on your measurements. And so I just put in like the standard measurements like bust, waist, hip, along with some other more specific ones. And what I really liked about this website is that for the things that are a bit more difficult to easily measure, like say the shape of your back or the slope of your shoulders, they have different presets that you can choose from so that you can choose the one that best matches your body. And then they just email the pattern to you and you can print it out at home. I don't know if you guys have ever downloaded patterns from Etsy before. It's basically just a grid that you print onto sheets of paper and then you tape the paper together and cut out the pattern pieces. I didn't film that bit, but it was pretty self-explanatory. So the fabric that I chose to use for this project was this cotton canvas that I got off Etsy. I wanted to make this project as cheaply as possible, so I think this was like between seven and ten dollars per yard probably. And I never showed the camera this, but I also used fusible interfacing and just ironed that onto the whole length of fabric before cutting out my pieces. I really, really hate fusible interfacing because I can never get it to stick, but I wasn't about to base interfacing onto this entire project, so I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or anything, but that's just my experience with it. Then I started pinning my pieces to the fabric. The pattern gave very detailed instructions on how many of each piece you need and of what fabric because there are a few types of fabric needed in this project. I chose to print my pattern without seam allowance because I like to add it manually by hand so that I have a precise sewing line, but in this project things went a little bit wrong with that, I'll explain when we come to it. And so as you can see, I'm just using my hem gauge to make sure every piece is spaced at least one inch apart so that there's half inch seam allowance on both sides. While I'm just cutting out all of this stuff, this footage is a few months old, and since making the dress form, I've been able to use it for a few projects. Most recently, I made this dress that it's not vintage, it's like a modern style, but it's quite fitted, and the way it's constructed, it kind of has to fit really well, and so I kind of expected I'd have to do so many mock-ups to get it right, but since I was able to use this dress form, I think first I was able to draft the pattern on the dress form, which is different than how I normally do it, using flat pattern drafting techniques, and the drafting process was a lot faster, and second, the pattern fit without making like any mock-ups. Like I did end up making two mock-ups just for for design purposes, but the fit was fine from the first mock-up, which was really nice. If you guys are interested in making this specific dress form, just be aware that I think it comes out very slightly larger than your actual body, but it doesn't really make a huge difference. Anyway, then I started marking my pattern pieces. As I said before, I like to add sewing lines on projects where it has to be really precise, just so that I have a really clear guide of where to sew. But if you notice, I'm marking the right side of the fabric, and so when I go to sew the seams with right sides facing each other, then obviously I'm looking at the wrong side to sew it, and so I can't see my marking lines, so that was not the greatest decision on my part, but it worked out okay. I also cut the notches in the pattern where they wanted me to, and that's just so it's easier to match the seams together. They also provided lines at the bust, underbust, waist, and hip, and I made sure to mark these on the pattern pieces because I knew that later in the process you were going to top stitch along all those points to make them more visible. Then came the more boring part of the project, where I just had to basically sew all of the straight seams down the dress form. It's kind of repetitive in this part, but at the end it gets really interesting when it comes to like the construction of how it all fits together. So the first seams that they wanted me to sew were sewing the center back piece to the side back piece. And then they wanted me to sew the two side fronts together and also the cup seams. Mm -hmm. 
And then after pinning all of those seams, I just sewed them on my machine. I also sewed the two upper front pieces on either side, but I think I lost the footage of that. So you're just gonna have to trust me that I did. While I sew all of those seams, I just wanted to tell you guys about something interesting that I've noticed when it comes to YouTube shorts. For the past like six months, I've been trying to make more of them just because it's like a really fun way to share small projects with you guys. And I don't know, I'm just having a lot of fun with them. But I've noticed that even as the quality of my shorts has improved, the average view duration just keeps on going down. I think it's because as short form content moves to the YouTube audience, people's attention spans are just steadily decreasing. <laughs> I don't know, I just thought that was something interesting to talk about. I'm also kind of curious to see how big of an overlap there is between people who watch long form and short form content because I exclusively watch long YouTube videos, but I watch short videos on other platforms instead, so. Anyway, next I sewed the cups to the front pieces. And I clipped the seams so that it would lay more flat. Here I'm picking some colors for the top stitching on the dress form. I think in the end, I ended up choosing pink for the seams that didn't matter so much, like the cup seams and the underbust, and brown for the bust waist and hip, which I really wanted to make sure I could see. I'm just using a zigzag stitch on my machine to sew under the cups in that top stitching color. This is like the first time I've ever used a stitch on my machine that's not just like the straight stitch or the buttonhole stitch, because most of the sewing I do is vintage sewing and other stitches really aren't used. I have a machine with like 120 different types of stitches, but the only one I ever use is the straight stitch. Then I sewed this upper front piece to the cups, completing the two sides of the front. Just so you guys are aware, obviously off camera, I'm clipping the curves that need to be clipped and ironing all my seams. It's just that I thought it would get really repetitive if I showed you that for every single seam, so. I also sewed the side seam so that in the next step, I could top stitch along the bust, waist, and hips in that brown color I was talking about earlier. At this point, the only seams left open are the center front, the center back, and the shoulders. Speaking of those seams, I sewed the center front and the shoulders so that only the center back was open. From here on out, things start to get a bit more interesting. I did the neck piece next, and in order to do that, I had to stay stitch around the neckline so that it wouldn't stretch. I also stay stitched along the bottom of the neck band piece, and I clipped the corners of the neckline because in the next step, we're going to be sewing the neck band to the neckline, which is basically sewing a straight piece of fabric to a curved piece. So in order to have it fit correctly, we have to clip the seam before sewing it. And then I just pinned and sewed that seam. After doing that neck bit, I could then close the back seam. Then I sewed the top circle piece to the top of the dress form. That was a bit of a difficult seam to sew just because it was so tight trying to get everything to lay flat. Lucky me though, I had two more of those to do because I had to sew the armhole covers into the armhole. While I was away from my machine, I also trimmed the seam allowance on the top circle bit so that it would lay more smoothly. And then I sewed the armhole covers into place before cutting out these pieces of cardboard to stabilize the armholes. I just pinned a piece of muslin to the seam allowance at the arm's eye, and then I basted it all around with the cardboard inside. This must be a piece of muslin from a mock-up because you can see the dart point there that I unpicked. Something that you guys might find interesting, the other day I was at an antique store and I purchased this cameo pin. They said it was from the 1940s and I'm gonna get a piece of ribbon and turn it into a necklace and I just think it's so pretty. Now that the dress form was mostly constructed, I could start working on the inner piece that kind of suspends the pipe inside the dress form to keep it standing upright. It's basically a cross section of the dress form that we sew inside. So here's the pipe sleeve. I decided to use this thick cotton twill because I needed something that was going to be really stable. And you can see that bit at the end that's muslin instead of the thicker fabric. I accidentally misinterpreted the pattern, so I had to add that on later. And these are the other two pieces of the cross section. They're double layered as well for some extra thickness. And I just sewed those to the pipe sleeve. 
They also wanted me to just do random lines of stitching down this cross-sectional piece just for some added stability. And with the seam allowance kind of pressed open like this, I could sew it to the center front and the center back seams on the dress form. As I was doing this, I kind of had no idea what I was doing, so I just kind of had to trust the process. And that was a bit scary. Here you can really see what I mean, how it's literally just a piece of fabric that's suspended inside the dress form. It's kind of cool looking. I needed a piece of foam to fill out the neck portion of the dress form, and so I decided to use an old needle felting pad that I had. Um, I think they intended for you to use like kitchen sponges or something, but this worked just fine. I just cut it into the cylindrical shape as they wanted to, and then I was able to push that into the top of the neck. This right here is the base of the dress form. It's basically two halves that are both double-sided so that the edges can be nice and finished. And this little semicircle in the middle is where the pipe is going to go. So I'm just clipping those curves so that it can turn smoothly. And so that you're able to open the dress form, the pattern also wanted me to put two zippers. Honestly, I have so many zippers lying around, I'm always looking for an excuse to use them because I feel like a lot of my projects lately have called for buttons or hooks and eyes or another sort of closure, and if I want to put on a zipper, a lot of the time I'll buy a metal zipper because they're prettier and more historically accurate, so I'm always looking for an excuse to use up my zippers. And of course, since they're a bit too long, I cut off the excess, but I didn't bother putting on a new stopper made out of thread because I figured the seam itself would stop it from unraveling. And then I just sewed that base layer to the dress form. This was my first time turning it inside out and kind of seeing what the finished dress form would look like. And here I'm cutting out a piece of cardboard for the base just for some more stability. Turns out I just did not film it, but I stuffed the dress form as well. What I did was I used toy stuffing for the outer like 3 inches of the dress form, and the very inner portion I stuffed with fabric scraps that I cut up really finely, and I was able to burn through like nearly all of my cabbage. It was a great way to use up my small fabric scraps. As you can see, I was able to slide my pipe into the pipe sleeve. This is just like a plastic tube that I bought at Lowe's, and it's going to go onto a coat rack stand that I bought on Amazon. And that extra piece of the pipe sleeve that I added on in muslin, that's just cut into strips and glued to the cardboard base to keep it all in place. The very last thing I had to do was assemble my stand. This is just a really cheap coat rack that I bought on Amazon, and I had to make sure the diameter of the pipe matched the diameter of the coat rack so that they could slide together. I don't remember off the top of my head, but I'll link both this rack and the diameter of the rod in the description so that if you want to make it yourself, you're able to use the same materials that I did. This rack is kind of cheap quality and it falls over kind of easily, but it's really cheap, so I'm not at all complaining. So, this is how the dress form turned out. I'm really happy with it. As I was saying before, it matches my measurements really well, at least the torso bit. I haven't really done anything with the shoulders, so I can't really say for that. But in total, it probably cost like maybe a little over $60, including the pattern, which was like 30 I think. So I think that's really good compared to a commercial dress form that like might not fit you right and stuff. If you'd like to make this dress form yourself, I'll link everything I use in the description, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to see what I make using this dress form, um, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.